and thank you for joining another uh, episode of Ketonian Corner. I'm Jolene Hale, and I'm here with my co-host, John Davidson. Hello, hello. So, these last couple of weeks, we've been kind of starting these shows out with, what have we done? Um, I kind of like it, so I think that's what we're going to do again. We're going to keep doing this. So, what have you done for the last two weeks, John, since we have done our last show? Relative to fitness, right? So it's just whatever. <laughs> this last I time mean, I, like, I talked about real estate. That yeah, is, no, uh, it's so, relative to whatever. Because you know, uh, I got my results from my um, calcium index scan, and they were fantastic. And we did talk about that last time that you were having one done. And I did. So Okay, and, which we're uh, going to discuss in a little bit Yeah, so I'll, 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 I'll hold it for details on okay. that one. But uh, not too much on the health side. I I have uh, I I have been continuing to think about tracking because I just really suck at tracking, which we've talked about before. And um, before everything we've talked about is looking at macronutrients and then trying to basically update, you know, like a MyFitnessPal or a, a different tool, um, Chromium or whatever tool you use. And that's just too reactive for me. And I think if I'm ever going to be solid in looking at macronutrients and trying to hit targets, I'll have to go the extra step to proactively look at what size meals, blah, blah. You know, like, here's the things that I'm going to eat. Take a proactive approach as opposed to a reactive approach. I I just so like planning up front. Yeah, I can't. I yeah. can't. Uh, I'll end up at the end of the day, and I'll put nothing in my fitness pal, and it's just too complex, and takes too much. It's too much of a time suck. So I know when we talked about me upping my fat, I've done that, but who knows how close I've got? It's how much better. Okay. Just, I think I need to give up on fitness tracking in general. I'm sorry, not fitness. Health, you mean know, tracking food. food in general. It's just too much work. It's just way too much yeah. work. So, and we can talk about this in a little bit greater detail as well, but I did stumble across um, a pretty solid plan, um, and it's something that you could use as a base and tweak it for yourself. So, we'll talk about that, um, but it is kind of along those same lines where it plans the meals out for you, and so you already know what the macros are, and you just follow what it is. Um, but if, if you are that kind of person who doesn't want to proactive or doesn't want to reactively track and you want to be proactive, it may be a tool uh, for people. So we'll talk about that a little bit more and, and also have that in the show notes. Oh, we're, um, are we going to talk about that today? Yeah. Oh, okay. Great. Yeah. Um, so what else have you been doing? Like, I mean, we talked about real estate before and, you know, whatever, like whatever's in your life. Because here, here's the thing. So our whole premise is a holistic health, mm -hmm. right? We, we focus a lot on fitness and, and nutrition, but it's also stress and all those other things that come around or come along with your overall health. Yeah. So, yeah, so anything goes. Uh, so at the gym, we are switching. For those of you guys who follow us for a while, I got PUMP certified, which is a class by Les Mills that uh, I've started to teach. And I think, I don't know if I've mentioned this, but I, I'm not very good at it. Because <laughs> from an instructor perspective, I've been teaching like CX Works, and I started with Body Combat like eight, nine years ago. So I'm like super solid in CX Works. I've done it since it started. You know, I can pick up releases fast. So picking up a new program was kind of a cha challenge for me. And uh, a week from today, well, no, I lied. Uh, a week from yesterday, we'll, we're switching into the 45-minute version, so I'm kind of pumped, pun intended. <laughs> because uh, for me, my, I, my struggle is that that class is pretty slow-paced, and we've talked about different types of exercise in previous episodes, but, um, you know, so you guys already know that I'm a big proponent of a heavy weight, um, a five by five, by five, those type of things. So this is obviously not that. This is the more of the rep effect, which is the smaller amount of weight, but more hip. And this, and moving from the 30 minute, technically it's a 55 minutes. So we're really only shaving off 10 minutes. But but the class, just in general, is a faster pace, and that that 
meets with my lifestyle better. I, and this is at Gold. This is here at Gold. In, yeah, okay, at Gold. your local. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. So that's how about you? So I did have a couple of tests done as well. I think last time I talked about I had, on my own, done a dairy elimination experiment. Um, Did not think that it did anything for me. Also known as torture. It it is it is torture. Um, And but I also like I was I had planned to do it for 30 days. At day 28, I decided to to chuck the whole thing and eat cheese because I had already given a blood sample for food tests. So I knew uh, that I was going to be getting those results soon, and well, let's be honest, I just wanted to eat cheese. So I quit it at 28 (laughs) days and um, got my my results back, and we're going to go over those as well. Um, Did another uh, gut biome test, and unfortunately, I made some changes in my diet. I had mentioned that I did uh, started eating some sauerkraut and... um, doing some other things, and it's not reflective. Uh, the, the results on those, the tests are about the same. I did, I did think, I, I think one of them changed from a negative to a, a neutral or a positive to a neutral, I think, but there was no significant changes. So I do have, I finally got the name of the person to contact so that I can work with them and figure out how to you know what all of it means first of all and then how to to make it better so hopefully in the next couple of weeks i'll have answers to that and we can talk about that as well uh but i will add those uh in the show notes so if anybody is interested in participating in that um i know some of the people uh that are you know maybe dial it in and listening into the show you probably work at the same place john and i do and the insurance does cover this so if they turn it into your insurance, um, any anything that is not covered by insurance, they just eat it. Which so, ironically is bad for me. Yeah. It, well, it was free. So oh, because you don't have it, it, you don't have because insurance. It, because because my deductible because I don't use my insurance at all. I would well, there is nothing. So they turn it into your insurance, and whatever insurance does not cover, you do not get charged for that. Yeah, we talked about this before though, but I've got one of those like health savings account things. So. I don't know how that works. Okay. Well, you can submit, and they'll check it for you, mm-hmm. and they'll come back and tell you. But I will put the put the link for that uh, U-Biome U biome, uh, in the show notes. So if you guys are interested in it. Hey, it's free is good. Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't have to pay for any of it. And I I think there's six. I think you supply six samples. I've done five already. So there should be one left in the series. Um, but, again, if anybody's interested, it'll be in the show notes. So. Um, okay, so let's talk about your your test. So I know that you got your results back. Um, yeah. Um, without going into it in great detail, I'm trying to remember exactly how much we talked about the type of test. Did I just say that it was a... So let's, let's recap really just, fast. Yeah, let's just what, give a high level of what the test is and, and what, what the purpose of it is, in case people don't know. Oh, uh, yeah. So... Um, so basically, when somebody's getting close to having a heart attack or something like that, the standard today is that you they think you had a heart attack or they think there's blockage and they actually go in with a scope and they, they uh, come back with a percentage of blockage, but it's like per artery because they're actually going in and they're either putting in a stent or they're, they're at a... Uh, Abrasive? Is that the is that the right word? I mean, invasive. Here, invasive. It's <laughs> abrasive. Right. Just. Uh, but anyway. So there's a little bit of a different, and and I think the I think the movie. Uh, I hate referring to documentaries that are kind of doom and gloom, but there's one called The Widowmaker that kind of talks about it, and you can pretty pretty much just go in there with the assumption that it's doom and gloom, but the stuff around this the um, CI scans is, is, is it's a real thing. So what so what CI CI scan is you go into a CAT scan machine and they use imagery to to basically segment your body into sections and then they tell you the percentage of blockage for that particular section. And CI means calcium index? Correct. Is that correct? Okay. <clears throat> correct. And then so basically just 
it's it's a way for them to get a cheap a cheaper way. So it's not quite as accurate, obviously, but it's a much cheaper way for them to 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 and give you. Yeah, and non evasive. So the whole thing took ten minutes. I spent longer filling out paperwork than it did. <laughs> it was not covered by insurance. Um, and I don't know if that was because I chose to do it and I wasn't referred by a doctor or whatever, but I just chose uh, to pay out of pocket. It was a hundred bucks. <clears throat> now, why I did it is probably something that we should talk through. I've mentioned before that I've sent my DNA away, but if you, whether you look at your DNA or you just go by your parents, you know, our, uh, both both my grandparents had triple bypasses, quadruple bypasses. Um, you know, my throwing my dad under the bus, but I think it would be okay for me to tell you, you know, he's never had a stroke or anything, but he's been dealing with AFib and and things like that. So it it's in my family. So proactively. Uh, the cool thing about a CI scan is, is you can get it done now, and I can do it again in two years, and then I can see if I'm tracking in the right direction or not. So from a gene perspective, if, uh, for, because I've had my DNA analyzed, I know that I am I'm at higher risk for AFib, which is obvious. My, I already mentioned my dad's dealing with that. So the genes follow suit with that. I'm also at like a three times three times the average risk for stroke, and I am 3.75 more likely for, uh, for uh, hypertension and stroke. So I already know basically. And this is based on DNA? This is based, okay. based on my DNA. So uh, we haven't talked about it in a long time, but I did the 23andMe, and then I exported my results, and I, and I put them um, you know, to a different tool that's a little bit more. 23andMe is a little gun shy on telling you information uh, because of the FDA. But there's lots of other tools that you can use uh, for five dollars. You know, whether well, they're, they'll interpret them for you. Uh, you know, and I well. also have a uh, hookup on a DNA um, that is free as well. So I was part of a research uh, group that will do this for you for free. I'll put that information in the show notes, too, just in case you are interested in doing that for yourself. Yeah, when, uh, full, full disclosure, though, that was work. It, it was work. It was <laughs> I work. Just, so, I just paid the Yeah. I so if you don't want to pay the money. Yeah. And so you're I didn't want to do the work. <laughs> yeah. If you're as cheap as I am, there is a way to do it. it you just have to answer some uh, questions and then... Every day you have to go into this tool and, and answer a couple of things, but you only do it for a short amount of time. They do your DNA, and then you don't have to. You don't. You can keep answering the questions, but you don't have to. But I'll link that in case anybody is interested in that. And yeah. you know, it's cheap as I am. It's a struggle. <laughs> um, I I really think personally, in the next five years, they're going to make huge strides in that, and I think that there are quite a few companies that are making, um, like if you just look at it from a macronutrient breakdown, I mean, it said I'd be sensitive to carbs. Duh. I mean, like, you know, like I've, I've found that this diet works best for me, right? So it, it, uh, I didn't get a lot of real important information from my DNA. It was more like uh, it was telling me things that I'd already found out on my own. So I think if there's something that was drastically different, like it said, uh, you know, that, I don't know, I can't think of anything, but if it said that I wouldn't be sensitive to, to, to for instance, it says that I, I can, uh, I'm a fast metabolizer of coffee, which is spot on. Um, it, if it was drastically different, then maybe I would look into, you know, testing something like, you know, cutting coffee out and see how it affects me. But, but anyway, back to... <laughs> Back to, uh, I, I went down a rabbit hole there. Uh, back to what we were talking about. Um, my results came back great, honestly. Uh, so I, they, they, they word things weirdly, <laughs> you know. So my official results are negative value predicts 90 to 95% the absence of significant calcification. 
so it's like a reverse. It's like not, it's not. I almost the first time I read it, I was like freaked out because I was like, oh my goodness, do I have ninety percent blockage? No, I have ninety five percent clear because they do it. It's almost like it's not a double negative, but when I read it, it sounds like a double negative. <clears throat> So anyway, that means it's fantastic compared to, so I actually, actually bugged my father um, to get one also so that I can see, because I know he's dealing with stuff. I want to know how, I want to I see how correlation is for him because, you know, when he had, uh, you know, his work done, you know, it was, it was the evasive, so they are doing percentages based on cameras and stuff and, and not looking at his whole body. So anyway, I thought... If any of you guys are on the fence on whether or not you should do it, I had never had a. What's it? I mean, I had never had one before. So I, the one I went to was open air. I didn't know there was a difference. So, just realistically, the open air one was just. It was so easy. It was like for a hundred bucks, there's no reason why you. Personally, there's no reason why I won't. I'll, I'll do it again. Like I came back with great results, and I'll still do it again to make sure I'm tracking it in the right direction. So, if you guys have any questions, I'm happy to show. But um, my results, but they break break it down by if you have if you have blockage, it'll actually tell you. Since I'm only at 90 to 95 percent, it doesn't even tell me where on my body it, it is. Because it, it, but if you did have blockage, then it says you know the area that type of stuff. So anyway, great news. That is, that, yeah, that is absolutely so I, great. So I'm, I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna do it again in a, cu in a couple of and years. And it's not super expensive, right? No, hundred bucks. I mean, bucks, it's out of, out of pocket, but out of bucks, hundred bucks. Uh, you know, like I said, I don't use my insurance anyway, so. Well, and if it's something like you, like, you know, you, know, you have family even, history. I mean, I, I didn't even turn it into flex. I bet you my flex would have even covered it. Oh yeah. Sure, I should probably turn that into flex. So you got you can ask me again in two months, and I'll say that yeah, I should still turn it into flex. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I should send you a calendar invite <laughs> to turn that in. Um, so yeah, so I have talked about as well. My husband has family history of heart problems as well, and so I have not broached this conversation with him yet. But I'm trying to figure out a way to gently convince him that he needs to go have this test done. Um, but now that I know that it's, I mean, it's very, it, there's, you know, minimal invasiveness and not very expensive, maybe he'll, maybe I can just talk to him about it and he'll agree to it. No, watch the Widowmaker with him. Oh, good, yeah, good idea, good idea. You can skip the first 15 minutes because it kind of is like the doom and gloom about, uh, you know, because they go into uh, stints. I guess I didn't realize this, but if you have a stint put in, then they cannot do a bypass where there's a stint. So there, there is a, there is a, I wouldn't say a movement, but there are, there are definitely people that that feel like they should tell you that ahead of time. Uh, so it starts with that kind of doom and gloom with the whole. Uh, you know, it's the hospital's biggest money maker, so that's why they don't promote, you know, the CT scans. But uh, I don't know. I can't imagine that there's too many places that would, you know, do that on purpose, right? But anyway, so just just know going in that there's a little doom and gloom at the beginning, and then you can fast forward to where they actually talk about how the, the scans work and, and how imagery works and how they're able to do all that computer generated and why that that's so much more beneficial. <clears throat> and the, really the only negative thing about the test in general is, is you can't move when they're doing the scan piece. So they actually tell you to hold your breath and you have to hold your breath. And if you don't hold your breath, that movement will, uh, makes basically will void out the test. Uh, yeah, because if there's too much movement then they can't calculate it, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. It's not that, it's not like you're holding your breath for like minutes or anything. It's just, you have to hold it at, when they when they flip the scanner around. Cool. So, any more on your stuff? I went back to me. See how I do that? Yeah. So no, I like no, to no, talk no, about that's myself. Fine. That's fine. Um, so, yeah, I got my results back from the food test, uh, which I, I don't know if I had them back the last time nope. we did the the show or not, but 
um, got the results and had conversation on what they mean and, and what I need to do with this. So much to my very dreaded sadness, I am allergic to dairy. So but I... Specifically, there's more detail than that. So there, try, there is. Try. So so the report that I, or the blood test that I did, I did the expansive. So there's two different ones that you can do. One of them is 90... I don't know, it's 90-ish uh, things that they test for, or you can do one that's 195. I chose to do the 195 because it got a little more granular. So it, it kind of breaks things down. Uh, they go through dairy, meats, grains, fish, shell, shellfish, nuts, fruits, vegetables, uh, some miscellaneous pieces, and then... Uh, they actually drill down into more specific pieces of all of those subcategories. They also look at spices. Um, so for me, the worst one was but dairy. Before you go into that, though, uh -huh. do, you, do you happen to know how that relates to, so when my son has his, his, his allergic test when he was younger and we were dealing with trying to figure out what was wrong with him, it was still the prick where they pr prick your skin and then introduce this stuff. And so it was a the... topical. So what's the difference between a topical and a blood? So I have never had a topical, oh, okay. um, but the blood, I know that they look for uh, the enzymes that you will actually, um, your body can't process. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. That's probably a big difference. Because like for us, um, it said molds. It's kind of, I mean, it was more specific than that. And, and uh, you know, basically we had to deal with uh, wrapping all the mattress pads and like those type of things. Um, and, but I always felt like it was very vague. Like that test results seemed very vague to me. And he still breaks out and we have no idea why. Yeah. This one is pretty specific. So I how mean, much blood did they draw? They did not draw any blood. It was a home kit. Um, I had to prick my finger, which I can tell you I do. Uh, well, you're diabetic. diabetic, so. Yeah, but this was worse, let me tell you. It was, <clears throat> it, it was a larger needle. Um, there was a lot of blood. For a little kid, it probably would make sense to take them and have blood drawn um, because it, it was not... It was not pleasant. So to paint a picture that. in my head, uh, when you do a when you're a diabetic and you're testing your blood sugar, it's mm -hmm. this little strip and the what are you putting the blood on for this particular test? So this one was a card, um, and I think there were there were either six or eight, no, there would have been eight or ten different squares and you had to fill the square oh, wow. completely so that with is blood. Way different. Yes. It was a lot more, I mean, when I say this, I mean, like, that sounds gru you know, gruesome and whatever, but to prick your finger, it was nothing like a diabetic needle. Um, it, it was painful. <laughs> I was, I did not like it. And for you, because I know that you do not even like pricking your finger to <laughs> you do know that I'm scared of the blood. glucose, this one, I mean, it was not, it was not good. It, it was an unpleasant experience for me. Um, so and again, I'm used square, to it. Like a keyboard? Like a no, key, a keyboard key is big. It, it, it kind of is. That. No, it kind of was about that size. Really? Um, Holy moly. And there was a circle that, you know, that it was, and you had to fill the entire circle with blood. So I ended up having to prick two different fingers because I pricked my middle finger first and then it just stopped. Well, you have to put a tourniquet on. I mean, that's, this is how much blood you have to get, right? So you put a tourniquet on your forearm. You are you, not selling this at all. No, yeah, and I, again, and it, it was nice because it was a home kit. I could just do it. But if you are somebody who's squeamish about needles or you are somebody who cannot prick your own finger to do a glucose test, this is probably not the test for you. Now, I do believe that you can go have blood drawn um, and, and have something similar, but this specific one, it's a, it's a home kit, right? So, yeah, put the tourniquet on, pricked my finger, blood stopped coming, so then I had, and I wasn't done filling my squares, so then I had to prick another finger and finish filling it. My fingers were sore for days afterwards because, again, it is, it's a pretty, it was a pretty large, and when, I mean, when I say that, it wasn't like the needle that you would stick in your arm or something, but it was much larger than your um, 
the needles that you use for taking your, you know, blood sugar or whatever. So it wasn't pleasant. See, I'm okay with the blood sugar. It's the ketone meter where you have to have more. Oh, well, this this was... So, okay, so less, just to give you an idea, you can't that. touch it, right? So I had to have my arm with the tourniquet on the forearm, squeezing my finger. The blood had to drip off of it onto the piece of paper. So it there is was, no way. I could do yeah, that. it was it was a lot more blood. Wow. Uh, so oh, I could never never be a doctor. It seems. Yeah. So I mean, and again, for me, it was it wasn't that I was squeamish. It was just uncomfortable. Uh, and and again, my fingers were bruised for days afterward. Actually, probably about a week. My fingertips were still sore. So if you are somebody who doesn't like to do it, I would not recommend the test. But I will. Put this in the show notes in case you guys are interested. I don't know after that whole uh, conversation. I doubt anybody's going to understand. It's uh, it costs just under four hundred dollars, and I don't know whether insurance would cover um, it or not. I didn't attempt it. To be quite honest, I just wanted to know what it was and went and did it. But it did come back that I'm allergic to dairy, and not just dairy in general, because there are. I don't know, I did not know this going into it, but I researched this. There are three components of um, cow's milk dairy. There is casein and whey, those are the two proteins, and then you have lactose, which is your milk sugar. A lot of people who are allergic to milk is because of the lactose. I am allergic to the casein and the whey which means that there is no dairy at all that I could eat because they have either casein or whey. Um, So did it go into whether or not it's hydrolyzed or not? So the reason I'm asking that question is because if you're a bodybuilder, you're familiar with casein and whey because those are the two basically protein elements that are in all of the different things. But but when you get to the quote-unquote super expensive, like the protein goes into your blood really fast, Mm -hmm. there's extra processing they do to break them down even more so your body digests them really fast. This did not come with any specifics. Well, I can't imagine it would be much different to your body. Because it's all be, your body's processing it no matter what. Yeah, it, it it really just came back that it was casein and whey. So I was actually a little bit surprised that there weren't more things that I was allergic to, and because I don't have the greatest luck, I figured that since I just bought, you know, a half a cow and a half a pig, that those were going to be what came back, and I was not going to be able to eat it. But luckily. It, it wasn't. Um, that did not come back. Now, um, people can't obviously see it. I can see it because you're holding your results in front of you. Uh, you've got a lot more lines on there. Yeah, so the- each one of them, um, so again, there's 195 on the test, and they tell you whether it's a low, moderate, or a void, okay? So, so these are your avoids. Right. So each line will tell you what my results were. So I'm going to go through this. So for dairy, um, they tested casein specific. My results were 402, which is an avoid um, category. The low is anything under 100. The moderate is between 100 and 350. And your avoid is anything above 350. So the lines that you're seeing, John, are telling you How um, yeah, what, what the correlation to those numbers are. And each lab is probably a little proprietary on the different you know, numbers they give it on. But for you, uh, so what are the other ones then? Because I can tell from a distance that you have more than just casing away. Yeah. So, um, again, the majority of them are dairy-related. So the ones that I have to avoid is casein, whey, cottage cheese, cow's milk, egg whites, but not the yolk. Um, and, and actually, those are the only, the only ones that I actually have an allergy that I cannot, I have to eliminate from my diet. So a lot of those are in the same category. So two pieces of dairy, which kind of goes along with, ironically, you were testing the elimination right. of so, dairy, and, right? Yeah, so we've talked about a lot. Mm-hmm. For months, probably longer, probably closer to a year, I have had a feeling that I was allergic to dairy. 
I was correlating it to the headaches that I get. And because at day 28, it didn't do anything to the headaches, um, I just assumed that that wasn't what it was, and I went back to eating it. Um, but what I didn't realize, and because I started researching this, I wasn't 100% sure what casein was. I knew what whey was, but um, I wanted to know if there were some foods that had less of those two that I could maybe try to eat, because, again, I don't want to not be able to eat dairy. Um, but, but through that, I found that um, one of the number one um, uh, symptoms from being a somebody who's allergic to casein is eczema, which I have. And ironically, I'm not going to say yet that it is 100% sure that this is what it is, but I started eating no dairy again on the 4th, and today is the 11th, but my eczema is almost cleared up. Wow. So although I do go through cycles and spurts, um, so again, I can't say that this is 100% that that's what the, the reason is, but I'm going to definitely keep an eye on it. And I don't know whether it cleared up the last time. First of all, the last time when I went dairy-free, I chose to still eat butter, which much to my surprise has a huge quantity of casein and whey. Yeah. So even though I thought that I was eliminating, um, yeah, and just rem- I really wasn't. Yeah, and just a reminder that the, on that particular set is is that butter would have those proteins in it, but ghee does not, right. which is why you'll see a lot of times when somebody's doing a a dairy, they'll they'll say you can have, you know, ghee. So yeah. So and if you guys follow us on Pinterest um, or Facebook, you'll see I actually made my own ghee because I love Kerrygold butter, and so I had a whole bunch of it at the house. Um, and so I just decided that because I couldn't eat the butter, I would make my own ghee. I have to be honest, it's not disgusting. Um, I'm, I don't like it as much as I do butter, but to me, it tastes like unsweetened caramel. Yeah. Uh, and so, like, I put it in my coffee every day. My coffee now tastes like caramel. It, well, actually, like this morning... I was trying to figure out, it was a taste that I had tasted before. It actually tastes like Werther's candies to me. Um, Without the sugar. Well, but I put sugar in my coffee, so, well, not sugar, but I put stevia. Uh So it is sweetened. And it, yeah. So, again, it's going to be something I have to get used to. But um, I have been eating omelets with only egg yolks. Um, Which is crazy. It it is crazy. And to be honest, as a child, I was extremely allergic to egg yolks, maybe egg whites too, but I know that if I ate yolks, I had a horrible physical reaction to them. And so I didn't eat eggs until I was probably in my late 20s. Um, But I, I do notice that although I don't have the same reaction to it physically, my stomach does not feel good when I'm eating the egg or the yolk only um, omelets. So I'm probably going to just eliminate eggs completely because oh, they don't, I just don't feel good. Um, they do something to my stomach. And again, when, when I was eating the whole egg, I wasn't noticing that. But now that I've eliminated the whites and I'm only eating the yolks, I am starting to get that feeling. Um, because I always knew as a kid when it was going to happen. Uh, and I, you know, should probably shouldn't talk about this because we're trying to talk about healthy stuff. But as a child, I loved deviled eggs. And so when I would eat them, I, I could feel that feeling in my stomach. And so I would do a chaser of Pepsi. And the acid in the soda would actually do something to those eggs. And it would not make me have that reaction. But if I didn't have soda around... It was, it was horrible. So, but I do, you know, like I said, I haven't had the reaction, but I do have that feeling in my stomach, so probably just going to eliminate it. Uh, some of the other things that were moderate, and again, this makes me very sad because I used to eat a lot of um, avocados, but I have a moderate allergy to avocados. So I make my mayonnaise with avocado oil and egg. Um, I'm, I'm going to try to figure out how I can... I would wonder if avocado oil would be different than avocado in general because it's so refined 
Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm going to attempt probably it. probably not the right word for it. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm going to attempt it if I can figure out. I haven't quite figured out if mayonnaise will emulsify without the whites. If I can use just a yolk and do, um, do the mayonnaise, then I'm going to attempt to do that because I don't eat it very often. And it's, I mean, it's a cup of avocado oil. So, plus I'm in the moderate range. So I might be able to get by with that um, at least, occasionally. At least you're dealing with the big stuff first, and that'll be yeah. if you're still. Yeah. But so. I also I also um, uh, tested positive for candida. So I was a little bit surprised by that because most people eating um, ketogenic, they don't have that worry anymore because um, your grains are one of the biggest contributors to feeding candida. And so for those who don't know what that is, it is a bacterial growth in your intestines. And I have a moderate uh, a moderate range. So if you're unsure, and this is kind of gross, but it is, a, it is a test that you can do on your own in the privacy of your own home. But in the morning when you first wake up, before you put anything in your mouth, don't brush your teeth, don't take a drink of anything, let saliva collect in your mouth, and then fill a glass of water and put and spit into that glass. Um, walk away from it for a couple of minutes, and when you come back, your spit should be sitting on the top of the water. But look underneath, and if you have like little legs coming off of the bottom of your spit, then you have candida. So, yeah, I mean, just a little quick and dirty way that you can test at home to see if you have it. Um, I did the back where they. Do your mouth at the dentist, and they mm -hmm. give you, they give you all the ratio, ratios of bacteria and everything. I think I'm I think I have a health a health problem. Like I like I like, <laughs> like to do tests that yeah, show me, me stuff about yeah, my Yeah, I'm, I'm a total geek about all this. So yeah, every once in a while. Now I will tell you again. I started eating different um, on the fourth, and so the very first day I did the test and it was, there were a lot of legs and they were long. They went all the way from the spit to the bottom of the, and, and I put about eight ounces um, of water into a cup. Um, I tested three times this morning. I did uh, my third test and the leg is barely underneath. So there is something changing the eating that is changing this. Uh, so, Mine probably I've was. I've never heard dairy. of this. That's crazy. I know, isn't it? All right. Well, we, yeah. we always run over on time. I don't know why you say that we're going to actually wow. run out of time. Uh, so it, um, just to give some actionable steps. So you're going to cut out dairy and you're going to cut out eggs and then you're going to limit some other stuff. What what things have dairy in it that, are, that have surprised you? Uh, so I used to put MCT powder in my coffee every day and mm -hmm. I looked at the ingredient list and it actually is made with casein so yeah so your powder they have to bind it to something right. so they're binding it to that yeah and in general um, if you're doing something that is a powder it's probably either casein or whey to be quite honest I knew that it wasn't whey but I wasn't expecting it to be casein Especially um, when they're doing coffee or something like exactly. that because it's more like a creamer. But yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, that really was the only thing that surprised me, to be honest. Well, there's I mean, lots of egg protein. And uh, egg protein in general uh, is made usually from the whites because right. that's what allows them to powder it. So if you have any of those processed foods that have added protein, a lot of times mm -hmm. in the fine print, it will be from some type of either milk or egg. Yep. So the egg protein is one that sneaks up on you too, kind of like soy protein does. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, finding the ingredient in things didn't really shock me. Um, again, I was very sad that I couldn't do butter um, and that I had to switch to ghee, but the the one thing that I have found a little bit difficult is making things that I like to eat but making them different because I was a huge dairy eater. We ate a lot of cheese. So I have switched to um, coconut cream, which we talked about before I started putting it in my coffee, but I've been making um, some cream sauces and stuff for my food 
Um, because I hate the taste of coconut, I have to do it in things that I can really have strong flavors. So all my spices and stuff need to be extremely strong. But other than that, um, it's not quite as hard as I thought it was going to be. And again, I, you know, tried to eliminate it for 30 days before. So I kind of got into the swing of, of doing things. The egg one is actually the harder one for me than the dairy, oddly enough. And I think it's just because it's a hassle to separate the eggs and... Yeah, it is a hassle. But... Oh, and they don't sell yolk. No. Like, like they do egg no. whites. Egg whites you can buy in a carton, but they don't have a yolk. Yeah, exactly. So... I think could change, who knows. Yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe that's what we should do, John. Egg yolks in a, in a carton. <laughs> right. Because we... There's a huge so demand. successful at our, at our side ideas. Yeah. So, but the one good thing is that when I did talk to them, they said even the things that you have to avoid, um, you can heal yourself and then start eating them again. So the recommendation is that you eliminate completely for six months, and then one thing at a time, you start reintroducing. They said that you will, um, you will have a reaction to it. So if your allergy is not cleared up, uh, you will gain four to five pounds. Is that what I wrote? Three to four pounds, sorry. Three to four pounds um, overnight because the inflammation, so it'll be water weight. But that will be your indicator that you should not be eating that. So then you eliminate that food again for another six months. Look at you um, having to break out the scale again. Yeah, yeah. So Look the other thing. Ending on a positive note. Yeah. The, well, the other things that you're moderate with, you only have to eliminate for three months. If you're on the high end of moderate, if you're on the low end of moderate, they said um, eat every three to four weeks. So I guess it's it's not horrible, um, and it does give me something to, to work with. So, And some of the stuff that I was moderate, I would never eat anyway, like oysters. Yep. So oh. I was okay. I'll eat oysters. Oysters and bison. Oh, yeah, and bamboo shoots. Darn, can't eat bamboo shoots again. <laughs> Actually, I don't think I've ever ate them, but... That's one thing, so. Well, they're in lots of Oriental. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, if you guys are interested in the blood test, I will put that in the show notes for everybody so you can go check it out and see what you're allergic to. All right, so, whole session about what tests we've done lately. Didn't think we'd ever be doing an episode like this, but definitely it was, uh, I think, interesting to kind of hear what other people's experiences are, some things that are available, and, uh, you get a, you, sometimes you get negative, I wouldn't say necessarily negative, but a lot of times, you know, people are like, oh, those tests don't help. And yeah. I think and I think they really do. You just have to change the lens that you're looking at it through. Yep. And, you know, just use a little due diligence on, you know, are you doing the right test and those type of things. So hopefully uh, you found that useful. And like you said, you're going to link to all this stuff in the show notes and yep. for a uh, read link to the Widowmaker movie for the CI. Okay. Yeah. All, right. All right. Well, if you got questions, where should they post those? You can find us on all the social media under Ketonian Corner. You can email us at ketoniancorner at gmail.com, and you can also find us on our website, ketoniancorner.com. Fantastic. So see you in two weeks. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thank you.